Hi guys, welcome to this short video lecture on key nearest neighborhood for classification that falls under a specific group of machine learning algorithms called instance-based learning. The idea of this video lecture is to provide a very intuitive understanding of how KNN works and as and when required, we would plug in the mathematical or the algorithmic details. So let's get started and find out how the flow of this lecture would be. First, we would have a basic idea of KNN followed by a bit more intuitive understanding of the details. Thirdly, we will get into the mathematical formulation of the algorithm, followed by a very short discussion of two kinds of voting strategies. Next, we would have a quick look at the things to remember when implementing KNN in a classification framework. And lastly, I'd like to show you the books that I refer to while building this algorithm. So let's get started. Let us assume that we are given a key scenario in which we are given two classes of animals, cats and dogs, and we are also given their respective heights and weights. In machine learning terms, when you are given this information, we call it a training set. Now for each of these instances of the heights and weights of the dogs and cats, what we do is we form a scatter plot that I show you over here on the left. And for each of the instances uh, or, the, or the points of the scatter plot, we assign it the respective classes, meaning here the cats and the dogs. Now once you have built this scatter plot, what, what you are next told is there is a new incoming sample that is shown by an arrow over here and you are also told that we know its height and weight but what we do not know is its class and we are supposed to determine it. What we do right now is we plug in the height and weight of this new instance and we in its what we find out is in its immediate vicinity, what are the other training instances that are there. Now what we see in this, in this figure on the right over here is there are five instances of, of, of dog and one instance of, of cat. So our common sense would tell us that this new incoming sample looks as tall and weights as like a dog, so it must be a dog. So this is exactly the way in which KNN classification works. In addition, you might have uh, noticed by now that when you have this training set and when followed by when you are classifying this new instance, there is nothing happening in the training set meaning that there is no global approximation or a modeling that is done when you are trying to find out a new instance to be classified. In machine learning terms, this is called as lazy learning. In contrast, let us consider the same case scenario and we were to use a logistic regression or a naive Bayesian classifier to do the same exercise. What we would have done is for the same group, a set of height and weight on the training set and for the corresponding classes, we would have built a model and used this model to find out the class of these to, of the test set. So this is an example of eager learner where a model or a global approximating function is, is formulated. Now let's get into a bit more details of the algorithm and on the intuitive side of how things work. Now that in the previous side we have already mentioned that there is a neighborhood or a vicinity of the new incoming sample. Let's try to understand how big or small should this vicinity or the neighborhood be. So for the first case, let's assume that we have the smallest neighborhood or k is equal to 1, meaning that for the, for the new incoming sample, we only consider one instance of the, of the training set that is closest to it. So for k is equal to 1, we find that this new incoming sample is very similar to the training instance of a dog. So the classifier would classify is at it as a dog. Now let's assume that we can we can expand this k 
for two meaning that we have expanded the neighborhood to include one more instance of the training in uh, instance and here for the new instance we have one class of of a cat the other class of a dog meaning that we have a tie in the case of a tie what happens is the the algorithm would randomly assign a class to this new instance now we again assume that we are expanding it expanding the k to, to three meaning that we have including three instances of the tree of the training set that is closest in vicinity to the uh, new incoming sample here we can see that there is two two dogs and one cat so by majority voting the algorithm would classify this new training new test instance to be a dog now a question might now arise that what is that value of, of, of k because for a small value of k we can see that there is very less generalization that happens in machine learning terms what we see that this is called overfitting meaning that there is very low bias and high variance in the in the uh, in the model that is being formulated in contrast if you have a large value of k what you would be eventually doing is you would be taking in a whole lot of training instances and there would be a too much generalization in machine learning terms it is called underfitting or uh, in specifically it's it's it, this would be a, a case in which there would be high bias and low variance so the question obviously arises at this point of time that whether we should uh, go in for a small k or a large k or whether there is an optimal k for which the prediction is very accurate for this optimal of allocation of k or the finding of the optimal k we usually use cross validation that we'll discuss in bit more details in the coding example now that we have an intuitive understanding how how k net for classification works let us look at the mathematical uh, details. Let us assume that we have a training set consisting of samples uh, x1, x2, uh, uh, x1, y1, x2, y2 up to xn, yn and we denote it by d. In addition, we also have a incoming test example z that is denoted by x apostrophe and y apostrophe where we would like to determine the class or y apostrophe of this new incoming sample. Lastly, we also know the exact value of k or the number of the nearest neighborhood. Now the algorithm goes in this way that for each uh, z we do the following. First we compute the distance d for each z and each sample of, of, of d. Next, we select the k nearest, uh, k closest training examples with respect to z. And uh, as, as I told you earlier, we, we know the exact value of k over here. And lastly, we have to determine the value of, of y apostrophe. We do it through an identity uh, indicator function that uses this uh, kind of a relationship that for, uh, for the class that has to be determined if it is equal to yi that is the class of the training set then it gets its it, then the I, uh, indicator function would give us a value of one otherwise it would give us a value of zero and we end the loop now this is the mathematical formulation of the uh, k nearest neighborhood for classification next let us get into the uh, a bit more uh, a detailed discussion into uh, voting strategies if we uh, let us assume that uh, as as we have done uh, prior that this is a new incoming sample that has come in and we have taken in a k is equal to eight that is the uh, uh, the uh, those training instances that is closest to the new incoming sample now for a by a majority voting we would see that for this new incoming sample uh, we have three instances of of it uh, of of the training as being a 
talk and we also have five instances of the of the from the training set being a cat so by the majority voting strategy we would uh, we, we come to a conclusion that since there are more cats in the in the in the circle in the circle over here we would call uh, we would call this we classify this uh, instance of the incoming sample as a cat however if you put a bit more thought into this classification scheme you might notice that uh, this incoming uh, the test instance is very close to the instances of dogs over here and if we use the uh, uh, KNN classification uh, strategy with majority voting, obviously it would go in to classify this new instance or test instance as a cat rather than a dog. You might have also noticed that the distance between this new test instance and the uh, and and the cats is pretty large compared to the uh, 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 to the distance between this instance and the one in the closest vicinity. So the uh, idea uh, now crops up that if we can use the idea of a distance in the indicator function over here and use it as a parameter to find out the weights in the in the in the sense that if you increase the distance over here and and, and square it this this denominator increasing meaning means that this weight will decrease so for each of these instances over here that has a that is very far away from this uh, uh, test instance as the distance increases uh, uh, their influence upon the upon the classification scheme of 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 this new instance decreases it, this is what we call the distance weighted uh, a voting strategy where we use a parameter a new parameter over here uh, of a distance and as the distance of the of the training instance from the uh, from the uh, specific instance of a test over here increases it influence on on the classification of the test in, instance decreases Lastly, we look at some of the salient feature of the KNN classification algorithm that we have already discussed. So the first is is a theoretical perspective that we have. Uh, so it, it would basically be a recap uh, in the sense that classification over here is based on local information, and uh, and it's uh, and KNN is basically a uh, is a lazy learner. In addition, another theoretical uh, concept that is important over here is the is the problem of with computational time. So if your training set has huge amount of of data instances KNN would not be uh, a, a, would not be very suited for uh, for as a classification algorithm because as you remember uh, KNN would find out the distance between each of the uh, training instances and the new incoming in, uh, test test instance so since there is a lot of computation to be done in terms of, of, of distance uh, calculation there is a huge amount of computational time required until or unless you have a very efficient strategy of indexing the training instances uh, it might not be a good uh, strategy to in implement a KNN classification algorithm and lastly on the practice front uh, it is always a good strategy to uh, center and, and scale your, uh, your predictors uh, uh, so that you do not give uh, mm, undue importance to any particular uh, predictor over the others. And with this we come towards the end of our uh, uh, video uh, lecture. The problem statement and, and R codes are, are to be discussed in the next video. Uh, and lastly, the book, these are the books that I have used uh, in, in the formulation of this video lecture. Thanks for, uh, for, for your uh, patient hearing.